Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with Tuesdays with Tupelo where I share a card made with Tupelo Designs products, like products you can find at the Tupelo Designs store. And I am working with the Prima Water Soluble Oil Pastels. In my uh, design team haul video you saw these and I said I would um, share some videos, different techniques you can use with them. And so I'm going to show two different things you can do with them today. The first thing that I'm doing is just taking some watercolor paper and scribbling a bunch of oil pastels and sort of an ombre-ish kind of thing where a color fade where I'm going from an orange to a yellowy orange finally to a yellow and I'm just trying to lay down a base of color. Then I'm taking a darker color in the same family, so in this case red and I'm scribbling over all of that color. And that might seem kind of silly at first, but um, it will reveal itself with the technique soon. So I have a bottom layer of ombre color and a top layer of a darker color. You could do this with a variety of colors as long as you're doing a darker color on top, it works best. So I'm picking one of the different stencils that I've gotten from Tupelo Designs. They have a wide variety of stencils to choose from, but I wanted something relatively simple and um, so that it would create a nice background. So I've taped down my paper and I've taped down my stencil and now I'm taking a fresh wet baby wipe to, for this technique. I prefer a baby wipe for this technique as opposed to a wet napkin because they can stand up to the technique a little better and they won't rip on the stencil. And so basically what you're going to do is take the napkin, or sorry, the baby wipe, and wipe over the stencil. You're trying to remove that dark color, or in this case specifically the red, from the stencil or from the areas underneath. So this way the areas that are covered by the stencil will stay red and the areas that are open in the stencil will go back to that color fade. And so essentially you're taking off the top layer of the water soluble pastels and it creates a really fun textured background. It's not incredibly precise and if you find that some areas aren't, uh, the color isn't coming up as easily, you can definitely sort of go back in and um, go a little more slowly and really pull the color out so that you get enough of an effect. And it's going to look kind of odd and messy at first, but give it time to dry and also know that it's just supposed to be like a fun background, not a um, really sort of precise background that you would get if you used like ink through a stencil or something like that. It's just a really great texture. And that's what I'm mostly using it for as opposed to a specific color design as a sort of fun representative of the sun sort of texture. And so I'm going to give that some time to dry while I work on the next part of the card. And so this is my second technique with the Prima water soluble oil pastels is to stamp with them. And this is one thing that I you know I mentioned in the haul video that you can do with them, but I experimented a little bit to think about what was the best way to apply the oil pastels and the water to get the best effect. And what I found was rather than um, and spraying the stamp, which I have done and does work, you can definitely put the color on the stamp and spray the stamp. What I found to give the best impression especially like in this, for instance, I'm using the waffle flower planted stamp set and I really want it to look like what it is. I don't want a vague background I, or sorry, a vague stamp. I want a really clear stamp. What I'm doing is layering on a thick bit of the oil pastel. So I'm going with the dark green and the lighter green and I really like how they blend together and create an interesting stamping color. Then I am spraying a little bit of water off to the side, picking it up with a brush and I would classify the brush as damp, not sopping wet. And then I am brushing the wet brush over the oil pastel to sort of activate it. Not too much that it blurs all of the lines and the details and not so little that it pulls it up. I found that it wasn't too hard to find that happy medium. So it might take a few stampings and use some scrap paper, but once you get it going, it's quite easy to do and produces a really beautiful result. It really looks like you hand watercolored these images when really all you're doing is stamping them. It gives a very different look than anything else that I've seen. And I'll actually be sharing in the future a comparison video between these oil pastels 
and gelatos because I know some people kind of think, oh, well, you can stamp with gelatos. It's a similar sort of thing. They do look a bit different, so they, you definitely can stamp with both of them. Now, here I have my color wheel out, and this I just thought would be like a fun thing to show you. Something that I do sometimes is in order to pick a good color combination, I reference the color wheel and think about um, complementary colors and um, other different groupings. And so you see right there in the color wheel, it kind of pointed to three colors that would go well together and takes sort of guesswork out of it. And so I do use that as a reference sometimes. And so basically here, if I know that I'm using some reds and oranges and also some greens, the next natural complement is a blue. So I picked out some blues for the pots, also from the waffle flower stamp set. And I'm doing the same exact technique. I'm scribbling some of the oil pastel on, taking a damp brush, wiping it over to activate the oil pastels, and pressing it down. I think that this, the oil pastels might act a little bit differently on rubber stamps, but as you can see here, I'm using it with clear stamps and it's working well. Um, I do think that there's a slight difference in how they hold ink and things like that, and I've seen a lot of people use them uh, with rubber stamps, but I wanted to let you know you definitely can use it with clear stamps. You'll d you do want to make sure that you have um, fresh water in between so that you're not smearing the colors. Right there, I got a little too much water, and because I've done this for just a couple of stampings, I kind of know what's too much. I see the color coming off, and so I was able to just clean the stamp and start all over again. If you try to apply the oil pastels while your stamp is wet, they are not going to be as dark and crisp and clear. So make sure your stamp is dry in between each stamping. Then I'm going to fussy cut out those pots and um, the succulents on top as all one piece. And I wanted to have the sentiment in the top right corner to balance them out. And I'm going to again blue bring in those blue colors so that there's blue in more than one area and that green really pops because it's only in one area so it really draws your attention and so I'm just painting a little strip of watercolor paper with the oil pastels and you could that's another I guess that's technically a third technique you could do you could just color directly on and create a watercolored background with them by scribbling and then um, pulling it out with a brush and that's all I'm doing there and once that is dry I can stamp a simple sentiment on and as mentioned, I'm going to put the succulents in the bottom left-hand corner and the sentiment in the top right, just so they sort of counterbalance each other. And I wanted to keep the card relatively uh, clean in terms of not adding too much on top so that that background that we originally created would really be a good star of the show and really let those greens and blues pop out against it. So that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials and seeing that comparison video of gelatos versus oil pastels, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also in the video description, you can find a link to Tupelo Designs LLC where you can pick up these products. Thanks for watching. Bye.